Hey, Rita, are you there? I have something extremely important to talk to you about. Is now a good time? Good evening, Victoria. Is this about my husband, Bartholomew, by any chance? Huh? He's at your house right now, right? Or rather, you pretty much abducted him and dragged him there in broad daylight. Um, you've got some serious nerve to get involved with the husband of one of your mom's friends. You were plotting to get your claws into my husband while chatting to me with your phony friendliness outside the kindergarten this whole time, weren't you? Ah, I see. So, basically... You already know about mine and Bartholomew's passionate and undying love for each other? Passionate and undying love? I think you mean your act of shameless betrayal and infidelity. Hearing you try to paint something so base and disgusting as something beautiful and pure is super creepy and genuinely makes me want to vomit. So I'd appreciate if you could refrain from doing that. At least while talking to me. Are we clear? Great. Oh my god, you're horrible. I can't believe you're profane our love with your bitter, hateful words. Just because you're Bartholomew's wife doesn't give you license to say whatever you want to me, you know. You might be upset with me, but I'm still a human being. I'll never forgive you for this. Why the hell would I care if you forgive me or not? Give me a break. No matter how much you dress up your words, no matter how harmless and innocent you try to make what you're doing sound, the bottom line is that you're engaged in an affair with a married man and you should be ashamed with yourself. You're nothing but a cheap, two-bit cheater. You can say what you like, but you can't deny the fact that you're a dirty, low-life scumbag with no morals. It's only normal you'd be upset after what happened, Rita. But you should know that me and Bartholomew are very, very serious about each other. It's just like they say, you don't choose who you catch feelings for, right? For all I care, you can get so angry and worked up that you turn bright red and steam starts coming out of your ears. But will it change anything? No. Me and your husband fell for each other, and that's that. Whatever. Will you at least send him back here to me for now? We can't discuss where we go from here if he's hanging around your place all day. <laughs> Does that mean you're going to discuss divorce with him? Yippee! Now hold your horses, Victoria. First of all, whether we divorce or not depends on how Bartholomew responds to the cat being dragged out of the bag. Besides, we have our daughter to think about, too. Woohoo! So it's decided, then. Divorce, divorce, divorce. Yay! Yeah! If thinking that makes you happy, then be my guest, sweetie. Anyway, will you send him back now? And we'll be stuck in a stalemate forever if you don't. I suppose you do have a point. Okay, I think I can just about tolerate not being with my stallion for a little while, if it means getting him all to myself for eternity afterwards. Just don't go forgetting Bartholomew's heart belongs to me. Me and only me. Rita, do you have any idea how lonely I was all alone without my Bartholomew last night? I very kindly let you have him back for a little while. So I think you at least owe it to me to get these discussions out of the way promptly so I can have him back as soon as possible. It might be a bitter pill to swallow, but it's about time you accepted the fact he no longer has any feelings for you whatsoever, and his heart belongs to me now. If you do anything to tear us apart, I'll never forgive you. Bartholomew, where the hell are you? Can we just stop this crap already? I get that you got scared and escaped in a panic when you heard I found out about the affair. But this has been dragging on for way too long now. It's been four damn days already. How long do you intend on playing these stupid games for? Victoria said you're not at her place. You do know that you'll still be paying me for compensation whether we divorce or not, right? There's no way you're getting off the hook here. So why not just be a man about it and face the consequences of your actions? If you keep running away and ignoring me, I'll get my lawyer to charge you for even more compensation. Is that what you want? 
No, please. Gah, just give me a break already, woman. Wow, you finally replied. So you are still alive. Well, where are you right now? Uh, well... I'm staying in a business hotel near the station by 5th Street. Wow, have you been staying there these whole last three days? It, yes. And who's paying for your stay? Um, you are. For God's sake, Bartholomew, you're unreal. Don't think you're getting any freebies out of me. I'll be adding every cent of what you spent on my credit card into the compensation. No, please don't do that. I'm already struggling enough as it is. Oh my god. If you're so worried about the compensation, I suggest you don't want anyone with half a brain would do. And hurry the heck up and get your ass back home. Now. Rita, I... Save it. I don't want to hear it here. You can say anything you need to say to me when you come home. I want you back at this house within the hour. Do I make myself clear? Uh, okay. Victoria, there's something I need to confirm with you. Oh well. Would you look at who it is? Do you have some good news for me, sweetie? Have you finally decided to divorce? To be honest, that is most likely the direction things will be moving in. But before we discuss that, I've been doing a little independent investigation. You know, about yours and my husband's relationship. There are a few things that just didn't sit right with me after he confessed everything. To be more specific, I've been doing some digging about you, Victoria. I'd like to make sure there are no contradictions or discrepancies between what you tell me and what I found out. Would you mind answering some questions for me over messages while I take notes? Sure thing, sweetie. Knock yourself out. Where shall we start? First of all, I found out you, that you have a husband, and he's currently out of state on a temporary work placement. You're still not divorced, are you? Huh? Well, yes. That's right. But don't worry. I intend on divorcing him as soon as me and Bartholomew get the go-ahead to tie the knot. How long have you been seeing my husband? Mm, I think it's been around a half a year now. That's when Bartholomew started dropping off and collecting your daughter from kindergarten, right? It was around that time that we started running into each other. And before we knew it, we'd fallen madly in love with one another. It didn't just stop at kindergarten, did it? I know he was visiting your house from pretty early on, too. Where was your son when my husband was there? I left him with my parents. They live on 6th Street and love watching over little Tommy. You see... My mother-in-law has always been a hard-faced old bat with me, but she spoils Tommy like it's no one's business. She's probably lonely with her son being out of state for work. Because she always jumps at the opportunity whenever I ask her to babysit. I almost feel like I'm the one doing her the favor. She's been a lifesaver when it comes to arranging steamy fun time with your husband. <laughs> I guess I'm at least relieved you haven't been exposing your son to your depraved behavior. Every cloud has a silver lining and all that. But I can't help but feel bad for your mother-in-law. Huh? Why on earth? She doesn't need your sympathy. Why not? You're using her as a tool to enable an affair with another woman's husband. Don't be ridiculous, Rita. It wasn't like that at all. Actually, I planned this out so that everyone would benefit in the end. Listen to me. Everything I've done has been carefully contrived to ensure that when I marry Bartholomew and divorce my husband, he gets full custody of Tommy. Think about it. I never have to worry about looking after him again, and the boy gets to be with his favorite side of the family. Everyone wins. It might seem strange to you, but this is my way of showing Tommy I love him. That's so messed up. I don't even know where to start. So it's fair to say you plan on fully abandoning your custodial rights to your son then? Yes, exactly. Me and Bartholomew plan on having lots of children of our own one day. The last thing I need is a leftover kid from my last marriage getting in the way of our happiness, you know? I see. Alright, I understood. Thank you for your honesty. There don't seem to be any contradictions here. I told you, didn't I? Me and Bartholomew are in love, and that's all there is to it. In his eyes, I see the stars above. 
My heart beats for him, my dearest dove. Oh, I can't wait for us to start our new lives together. You can keep your creepy, vomit-inducing love poems to yourself, things. To be honest, I could care less about how you feel for each other. The only reason we're having this conversation is so we can reach a settlement on the affair and I can put all this crap behind me. Oh, stop it, Rita. Why do you have to be so salty and bitter about all this? I'm trying to work with you on here. There are no hard feelings, you know. He just chose me over you. That's all. I don't see why there's any need for all this hostility. Me and Bartholomew are... I don't want to hear it. We'll never agree on this, but let's just agree to disagree and save ourselves a bunch of unnecessary trouble. To be honest, you're kind of annoying. And you're a big, horrible meanie. Anyway, you'll be receiving a visit from my lawyer over the coming days. Huh? Your lawyer? Yep, my lawyer. I figured it'd make more sense to leave the compensation to a professional, even if it is going to be a little costly. In the end, I can take his fees out of the compensation anyway. I suppose that makes sense. In any case, I'm not worried about the compensation. I have a feeling that a certain someone will take care of it all, my share included. I think you probably know who I mean. <laughs> Is that so? Interesting. Anyway, I just had that certain someone sign the divorce papers and booted him out of the house. Huh? Wait a second. What? It's your turn to take him in now. Good luck. Hang on. I don't even... Wait. Surely you should be the one being booted out. Of my own house? Don't be ridiculous. The house belongs to you? Mm, I see. Actually, you know what? It's fine. Whatever. Bartholomew will be mine forever and ever from here on out. So what do I care if we have to let go of a poxy little house? <laughs> Goodbye, Victoria. Hey, Rita. Thanks a bunch for finally divorcing my man. You're a star. Bartholomew just got done paying my share of the compensation. Not only that, but he also agreed to pay child support for Tommy when my ex-husband won full custody of him. In just 100 days' time, me and my hunky stallion will be officially married. Oh, I can't wait. Rita, I finally got my knight in shining armor. This is every girl's dream. Toodle, sweetie pie. Hello, Victoria. I have the most amazing news. Me and Bartholomew officially got married today. Sure, we might have been officially together for a whole three months now. But I must say, there's something truly magical about having that ring on your finger. We're so happy. It's like a dream. A fairy tale. Did you really go out of your way to unblock me just to brag about getting married? That's kind of sad. <laughs> I guess I may as well ask you if this is you unblocking me. What? Oh, this should be good. Go on, sweetie. What is it? What is it? Where are you guys living these days? In the same apartment I've always lived in. My ex-husband took Tommy to live with his parents, so I stayed and carried on living here as normal. Wow, you stayed there? Yep, and this is where things get really good. Now, me and Bartholomew can finally start our married life, full of joy, romance, Love and passion. We both got disowned by our parents and told never to contact them again. But I guess it's a small price to pay for a true love as special as ours. It's kind of romantic when you think about it, right? The love that overcame all adversity. They should make a movie about us. Damn, well, this is awkward. Victoria, there's something you should know. Your ex-husband told me this when they took Tommy to live with his folks after the divorce. But that apartment is being rented in his name. And you have a deadline to be out at the end of this month. Huh? What? Did you change the name on the tenancy or something? The name on the tenancy? Wait a second. I don't think we went through any procedures or anything. I just kind of carried on living here. If you don't know the details, wouldn't contacting the landlord and asking him be the intelligent thing to do? You know since your entire living situation depends on it? Oh no, we have to be out by the end of the month? 
This just won't do. I have to tell Bartholomew about this, and we need to find somewhere else to live. But really, this is exciting. You know, it's not every day a girl gets to move into a new apartment with her new husband. I know, I'll flutter my eyelashes and get him to buy us one of those new, luxury high-rise apartments near 8th Street, with the view overlooking the bay. Sure, go ahead, Pumpkin. You're free to do whatever you like. <laughs> oh, there was one more thing I wanted to mention. What is it? What exactly did you have your sights on when you got your claws into my ex-husband? Huh? No, no, no. It wasn't like that at all. He might make 150 k a year, but that's not important to me. I just wanted to marry my darling so we could be together forever. Huh? 150000 a year? When two people are madly in love like we are, money is insignificant. The fact that he makes 150000 a year is just an added bonus to our love. Or rather, it just so happens that the man I fell for is also filthy stinking rich. Um, Victoria? I'm the one who makes 150000 a year. What? I did think you seemed a little confused about some things. But I had no idea you'd make a misunderstanding of such epic proportions. Wait a second. What are you talking about? No way! This can't be! You work a regular part-time job, right? How could you possibly make that much money? Sure. I do work part-time on the register at a supermarket. But my family runs a lucrative real estate business with properties extending across the whole country and with offices abroad. I help out with the management of the estate branch. A real estate business? And what's Bartholomew's role at the company? He doesn't have anything to do with it. Not only that, but he's pretty much unemployed right now. Unemployed? The company he'd been working for these last 10 years went bankrupt after a whistleblower blew the lid on some shady borrowing practices 10 months ago. What with the way the world's been going recently, he said he wanted to use his redundancy as an opportunity to get into working from home as a freelancer. The early days were always bound to be rough. Everyone knows it takes time to establish reliable contracts as a freelancer, so I never expected him to start raking in the big bucks immediately. Fortunately, I made more than enough with my real estate work, so support us both. We'd agree he'd increase his share of the housework and looking after our daughter in return for me supporting him while he looked for work. Things went great at first, but then he met you and started having an affair. And to make matters worse, he started using the time he should have been putting towards looking for work to meet up with you in secret. As a result, he continued to contribute precisely nothing to the family finances for several months on end. Oh my god, no way. You mean, Bartholomew still doesn't have a job? I don't know for sure, but surely if he lives with you, you'd know if he was working. Since he's supposed to be working from home and all? Oh my god, but I've never seen him do anything that looks like work. Uh, this can't be. So what about my share of your compensation? What about the child support payments to my ex-husband? How did he pay for all of that? I have no idea how he came up with the compensation or how he continues to keep up with the child support payments. But there is one thing I'm confident about. He's up to his ears in debt. Debt? Which is why I have a feeling you guys are going to be in serious trouble if you don't both start working soon. You mean he lied to me about making 150000 a year? I can't categorically state that he was lying. Why not? Just before we divorced, I asked him if you ever asked him about his salary or whether he ever told you anything about how much money he makes. And sure enough, he told me you asked him how much he brings in per year just before you started the affair. Yes, that's right. He told me he was making 150000 a year. You see, the figure he gave you was actually his household income. Household income? This was just after he lost his job at the company and was still trying to get established as a freelancer working from home, which meant he was barely making anything. Naturally, he was never going to admit that to you, so he probably felt like he had no chance but to answer with our household income. But that's not important to you, right? You truly love each other, so whether he has money or not is of no importance, right? Oh my god. Your love for him is so pure 
But you'll accept him regardless of his financial situation, I'm sure. So, not only does he have no money, but he's also unemployed and up to his ears in debt? I can't believe this is happening to me! Good luck with paying off his debt as a couple. No way! This all has to be some kind of sick joke, right? No! I can't believe Victoria actually thought Bartholomew made $150,000 a year. It's both tragic and hilarious in equal measure. Something tells me him paying her share of the compensation and covering the child support payments to her ex-husband were instrumental in pulling the wool over her eyes. But later on, after doing some asking around, I found out he got a hold of that money by going into debt with his friend, who was a successful stock market trader. Apparently, Victoria tried to lure his affluent friend into bed when she found out about his riches. But unlike Bartholomew, his friend had a sense of honor and dealt with the shameless gold digger in seconds. Naturally, he told Bartholomew about what his wife had tried to do behind his back, and before long, the two of them got a divorce. Apparently, Bartholomew demanded she pay him back every cent of what he paid to cover her share of the compensation and child support as one of his conditions for the divorce, resulting in Victoria ending up in tens of thousands of dollars in debt. Hilariously, she begged her ex-husband to take her back in desperation, and Bartholomew pleaded with me to give him a second chance. But of course, we both refused. Both of them got disowned by their parents, too. Last I heard, they're both working like dogs while living in run-down, cockroach-invested apartments in soul-crushing isolation to keep up with their debt repayments. Janice, please excuse this text. I tried calling, but you weren't available. On my way to work, I witnessed a terrible accident at an intersection. A little girl was involved in the accident, and I'm here with her, so I'm really sorry, but I'll be a little late. Which intersection? The one near 14th Street Union Square Station? Oh, that's not so far. If you run, you can make it to work on time. I'm sorry if I was unclear, so allow me to try explain this again. A little girl has been injured, and I'm waiting with her. Let me try to explain it to you, Simon. Have you called an ambulance? If you have, you're free to leave. There is nothing more you can do for her, so there's no reason for you to stay with her. If you run, you can still make it to work on time. Punctuality is very important. Simon! You're late! When are you coming to work? I'm in the ambulance now. What? Why are you in the ambulance? The little girl's mother is at work and can't come right away. I don't understand. You aren't her parent or even a relative. Why are you accompanying her? What you're doing, it's called hypocrisy. It sounds to me like you just don't want to come to work. I don't care what you think anymore. It's just... I saw a little girl get hit by a car. She's crying and bleeding and I'm supposed to look the other way and go off to work? I don't want to be that type of heartless person. That's why I'm in the ambulance with her. We'll be at the hospital soon. I will contact you again later. Get out of the ambulance and cab it to work now! You can still make it to the morning meeting. Simon! You know that talking on cell phones is forbidden at the hospital. Are you testing me? I am your supervisor, you answer to me. That includes answering my calls, wherever you are. It's not like you're a child. You're going to be 30 soon. Grow up! I'm not acting like a child. It's because of my age that I'm acting like a responsible, conscientious adult. Just because you graduated from an Ivy League university, it doesn't give you the right to ignore your superior's orders. I mean, you can't even follow my orders properly half the time. The little girl's mother has just arrived. I'll head to the company then. Sorry for any inconvenience that I may have caused. Even if you head over here now, you won't be here in time for the morning meeting. Think about how your selfish actions have troubled me and your colleagues. I'm going to deduct half a day from your PTO for your tardiness. 
and the cab fare from the hospital, the company will not cover it, so pay for it yourself. This is Ashley, Amber's mother. Thank you for helping my little girl. Amber told me that the two of you had exchanged WhatsApp details. I hope you don't mind that she told me your contact information. Oh, you didn't need to contact me. I mean, I didn't ask her for her contact details. I'm not that type. Oh, don't worry. I understand. Kids nowadays often exchange WhatsApp details. It's not a big deal to them. And where are you right now? When I came out of Amber's room, you weren't nearby. I would like to thank you in person for all your help. You don't need to thank me. I didn't do anything. I'm fine. Really, there is no need. But you stayed with Amber until she arrived at the hospital. Oh, are you at work? Come to think of it, the accident must have happened on your way to work. I'm really sorry for any inconvenience this has caused you. No. Actually, I'm at the donut shop around the corner eating a jelly donut. Excuse me? My crappy supervisor is going to deduct half a day from my PTOs, so I decided there was no reason I had to rush back to work. Oh no! I'm really sorry. No, no, don't worry. After I finish my donut, I'm gonna go to Best Buy's and look around. I'll have a nice leisurely lunch, perhaps at a steakhouse, and then go to work. I know it sounds pathetic, but this is the way I am. So really, don't worry about me. Well, in that case, Amber and I have just left the hospital. Can we please take you out for lunch? Oh, you really don't need to. And you both must be exhausted after what's happened. I've already taken the day off from work and Amber's not going to school today. I just don't have the energy to make something at home, so we decided to eat lunch and then head home. We both really would like to thank you for your kindness. Well, in that case, I gladly accept. Thank you. That's wonderful. Shall we all meet at Time Warner Center? I'll make a reservation at the Porter House. Simon, where are you? It's past 11. Huh? I thought you were giving me the morning off. You're deducting it from my PTO, right? I don't believe it. Is that head of yours working? I don't understand. I told you that your actions have troubled your colleagues and me, right? So shouldn't you show some remorse by coming to work as soon as you can? You are planning on apologizing to your colleagues who had to cover for you, right? I'm sorry, I will apologize to the people I troubled, but I don't know if that needs to be done during working hours. We'll see how things are and apologize at an appropriate time. I've had enough. Your attitude is just terrible. I have no choice but to report you to the CEO. And I will ask HR to make a note of this on your permanent record as well. I see. There is a strong possibility you may be terminated. Our company's employees must put the needs of the company above all. I heard through the grapevine that your grandmother lives with your parents. Yes, yeah, she does. I don't understand what my grandmother has to do with work. In that case, it may be better for you to work for another company. Excuse me? If you miss work because your grandmother is hospitalized or on her deathbed, we'll need to cover for you. And if she passes, you'll take some time to mourn, right? It's the same when a female employee takes maternity leave or quits after they get married. When I see situations that may possibly hurt the company, I get rid of them as soon as possible. Janice. I have never lost faith in a human being as I have in you just now. Though I agree that the company is important, there are some things that are even more important. I told you to stop all that hypocrisy. You make me sick. Anyhow, I will be reporting you to CEO Stevens. It's too late to apologize. Good luck finding your next job. Simon! Please answer your phone. Is something the matter? It's Sunday, my day off. Though you are my supervisor, I don't think I'm obligated to talk to you on my day off. Fine, then let's do this by text. What did you say to CEO Stevens? What do you mean? He just called me and gave me a verbal warning. He said I had made a false report against you. 
Why am I in trouble because of you? What did you say to him? Oh, I won't forget this, Simon. I'm going to convince the company to fire you. Oh, I know all about that. Actually, I'm at CEO Steven's house right now. Excuse me? Remember how I helped that little girl who got hit by a car at the intersection? That little girl, her name is Amber. Her school insisted on presenting a certificate of gratitude at their school assembly. What? CEO Stevens and I will be attending the assembly together next Monday. Hold your horses, huh? What's going on? Simon, explain yourself. I apologize. I was just talking to CEO Stevens about your report. But Janice, I don't know why you would report me as a compulsive liar who lied about the accident to cover up oversleeping that day. Um... You wrote that I was a heartless man who didn't care about people's misfortune and used them to my own advantage. When I saw you had written that, Janice, I was enraged. So I sent CEO Steven screenshots of our texts that day. What? Tell me you're lying. I know you wouldn't, couldn't do that. CEO Stevens was furious. I think you'll be hearing from him later. I don't know, you may get fired. Anyhow, he said I can go home now, so I'm going home. He just called me, but I ignored it. We haven't finished our conversation, Simon. You ignored a call from the CEO. It's not like you're a child. You're going to be 50 soon. Aren't you supposed to answer your supervisor's calls? Wherever you are. Stop fooling around, Simon. I've decided to forgive you for your attitude, so call CEO Stevens. What am I supposed to say to him? What do you think? I apologize for having a bad attitude at work. Tell him that. This whole situation was created by your bad attitude. It's not my fault I misunderstood what happened that day. Huh? There's no way I'm telling him that. Don't say no way and just do it. I can't believe a slacker like you gets honored by a school, but a hard worker like me is on the chopping block. <laughs> I've done so much for the company. CEO Stevens told me that trust is really important in business. It's important for us to be compassionate, and when in trouble we must seek the compassionate choice, which is why he was so proud of my actions that day. Do you know how happy I was to hear him say that? What's that? Do you mean if I'm fired, you won't feel any responsibility? Not one little bit. It has nothing to do with me. Fine. In that case, I apologize. So, call CEO Stevens. Excuse me? I apologize for the comments I made. So, call CEO Stevens to smooth things over. Sorry, but no can do. What? I thought you had no issues with that, being a hypocrite. I'm your supervisor. I've done so much for you over the years. Can't you do this one little favor for me? I may be a hypocrite, but I won't switch sides for just anyone. I don't want to use any leeway I may have with CEO Stevens on you. What the- Will you stop this already? It's too late to apologize. Good luck finding your next job. HR investigated Janice's work performance and found many instances of how she'd harassed her subordinates. Though she was terminated, she tried to convince CEO Stevens what a talented employee she was until the very end. CEO Stevens told her no matter how talented she was, without compassion she was worthless. She left the company, defeated. Also, the girl from the accident, Amber, and her mother, Ashley. For some reason, the three of us go out for dinner from time to time. The other day, Amber told me in confidence that she didn't mind if I became her new father. But Ashley's so beautiful, I'm sure she's not interested in someone like me. Anyhow, I'm so happy I'm able to lead a life of compassion without any stress or hypocrisy.